What is an American bully in a pocket? What is a pocket size American bully, which is one of many sizes available for the American bully? About five different answers will probably come up in a quick Google search. Sadly, there is a lot of inaccurate information on the internet, particularly when it comes to the American bully breed, and the pocket bully is no different. Take this article, which is currently ranked number one on Google, as an example. It's simple to understand why there is so much misunderstanding regarding the American bully breed and the various classes or varieties within the breed. As stated in the article, pocket bullies are the American bully in miniature. They are not, however, true purebreds like some small breeds like the Labrador. Actually, they are a cross between the Paddedale Terrier and the American Bully. The Pocket Bully The Pocket Bully is not a Paddedale Terrier and American Bully crossbreed. The Pocket Bully was not created through the blending of other breeds, it is an American Bully. It is merely a variety of the American Bully breed, see classes below. The American Bully varieties, also referred to as classes, are classified according to adult height, with the pocket variety being smaller than the standard. The only difference between the pocket bully and the American Bully or any of its varieties is adult height. There are no other breeds that make up the pocket bully. There are four varieties or classes in the American Bully breed, which are modifications to the standard for classification and useful for separating the various types and conformation events, also known as dog shows. Furthermore, many of the articles on the American Bully that have received high rankings make the incorrect claim that there are five different varieties. There were initially five, but in 2014, the ABKC eliminated the extreme class. In the section below this one, we analyze each of the four American Bully varieties. Online information that is incorrect. Even DogBreedInfo.com contains inaccurate information about the American Bully breed, proving that there is a widespread lack of accurate information about the breed online. The vast majority of breed information and resource sites have inaccurate information listed for the American Bully and related breeds. I'm not sure if these websites simply copied the first high-ranking article on Google without doing any research or fact-checking. Given that the website's sole purpose is to be a resource on dog breeds, you'd think they'd at least check their sources before publishing information about a breed of dog. Unfortunately, this is the first result whenever a search is made for American Bully or any of the related terms thanks to their ranking on Google. American Bully Types and Varieties We'll discuss the four American Bully varieties in this article, as recognized by the ABKC, the breed's founding registry. We'll also clarify some of the terminology used to classify the various American and foreign bullies. Bullying is done by words like Merle, Nano, Micro, Teacup, Extreme, and similar terms. The misclassification of breeds is among the next largest myths involving bully breeds. Yes, the American Bully was known by a variety of names when it was first developed, but today it has become recognized as a separate breed by a number of kennel clubs and organizations. What are a Pocket Pit Bull, Mini Pit Bull, Bull Pit, Micro Pit Bull, Pocket Pit Bull, and Micro Pit Bull? So what are a Bully Pit, Mini Pit Bull, and Pocket Pit Bull? What distinguishes these from the American Bully? Simply put, descriptions of any breed such as Bully Pit, Pocket Pit Bull, and Miniature Pit Bull are not accurate. Since you are now aware of this, kindly inform those who use terms like these of the distinctions between an American Pit Bull Terrier, APBT, the American Bully, and related bully breeds. Pocket Pit Bulls and Mini Pit Bulls do not exist, at least not in the eyes of any reputable registry or kennel club. The expression bully pit is also frequently used, but it does not accurately describe any breed or canine classification. These are merely terms that are misused when an American bully is being discussed. American Bully Breeds History The American Bully Kennel Club, also known as the ABKC Registry, was founded in 2004 and helped establish the American Bully Breed, which was developed around 1990. The American Bully breed was acknowledged by the United Kennel Club in 2013. Although there are other registries, we will focus on the main few in this article, which are the ABKC, 
BBCR, BRC Global, and the UKC. The American Bully breed, according to the ABKC, has been selectively bred to provide the American Pit Bull Terrier with a new direction and outlet. All of the advantageous traits of the breed's ancestry were preserved, just like with the American Staffordshire Terrier. These include many of their physical characteristics as well as loyalty and stability around people and kids. Aggression in dogs and people has been bred out because there is no longer a need for it outside of hunting and sport and that American Bully breed was created with the aim of being the ideal companion breed. The American Bully is made up of what breeds? According to the UKC, a number of other breeds, including the American, English, Pacific, and Old English Bulldog, among other Bulldog breeds, were subtly incorporated into the American Bully breed. The physical characteristics of the American Bully breed set it apart from its forebears, the American Staffordshire Terrier, American Pit Bull Terrier, and various Bulldog breeds. The American Bully breed differs from its American Pit Bull Terrier and Staffordshire Terrier ancestors in terms of heavier bone structure and bullier build, but not in terms of the number of health problems that are common in the Bulldog ancestry. For many, it's the ideal mix of a breed more active and with fewer health issues than many Bulldog breeds combined, without the gameness and drive of an American Pit Bull Terrier. The end result is a breed of dog that many people consider to be the ideal companion, calm, self-assured, and statuesque. Read the evolution of the American Bully and the history of the American Pit Bull Terrier. Character and Temperament The American Bully is a cheerful, gregarious, dependable, and self-assured dog. Loving and kind to others. Good-natured, humorous, incredibly devoted, and a loving family pit this breed of dog, which is stubborn but obedient, only wants to please its owner. Goofy, playful, unyielding, devoted, and amiable are some adjectives that describe personality. This unusual breed is renowned for exhibiting a high level of tolerance for children, a fervent desire to please its family, and an eerie knack for picking up on the negative feelings of its owners. The American Bully is an all-around, dependable, trustworthy, and perfect family pet. They are courageous and fiercely devoted to their owners. Physical Form and Ability The American Bully is physically impressive, with an athletic build that exudes strength and agility. It is muscular and defined. The breed is adaptable and proficient at carrying out a variety of tasks. Physically, the American Bully has a solid, defined, athletic build that is both muscular and toned, denotes strength as well as agility, and is graceful yet impressive. It is a breed that is competent and diverse in all jobs and skills. The breed has a very pleasant temperament, a playful sense of humor, and gets along with people, other breeds, and other species while being confident but not aggressive. Lifespan How long do American Bully Pocket Bully, Standard, and XL Bullies typically live. 8 to 12 years is the typical lifespan. The American Bully breeds health concerns. What are a few of the health conditions that the American Bully breed is prone to? An extended soft palate. Heart enlargement. Heart palpations. Socialization. One of the most crucial things you can do for your American Bully is to socialize them. When young, thoroughly socialized to prevent any dog aggressive tendencies. It has proven to be an excellent property guardian and is also highly regarded as a wonderful companion dog. This breed is not appropriate for passive owners who are unaware that all dogs have a natural tendency to form a pack order. Trade Zona The American Bully requires an owner who is firm, but also composed, assured, and reliable. They must understand what is required of them, the guidelines to follow, and the restrictions on what they are and are not permitted to do. The goal of successfully training and maintaining this dog is for it to become the pack leader. A dog's instinct to maintain order in their pack is natural. When humans and dogs coexist, we take on the role of the pack. Under a single leader, the entire pack works together and boundaries are established. The dog must come after you and all other humans in the pecking order. The best way to guarantee that the relationship will succeed is to do this. 
Classes and Varieties of American Bullies Let's look at the different classes in the American Bully breed according to the founding registries, the American Bully Kennel Club, also known as the ABKC Registry, and the United Kennel Club, also known as the UKC. This is for those who may be unfamiliar with the breed or are still learning. The American Bully breed currently has four different varieties, classes. With the exception of the classic variety, which is merely the same height as the standard but carrying less mass, the only difference between them is adult height. ABKC American Classes 2014 Present Pocket This is a modification to the fundamental rule that a pocket bully is identified by its adult height. Males under 17 inch and with withers no shorter than 14 under 16 for females and no shorter than 13 at the withers. Standard The American Bully should appear to be extremely strong considering its size. It has a blocky head, a muscular body, and a medium to large size. The American Bully should appear to have a bulky build and heavy bone structure. Males with withers measuring 17 inches to 20 inches, 43 centimeters to 51 centimeters. Females with withers measuring 16 to 19 inches, 40 to 48 centimeters. Classic. This is a change to the fundamental requirement. A bully's body type and build define it as a classic bully. Both sexes of dogs exhibit bully traits despite having lighter body frames and less overall body mass. Simply put, an American Bully Dog of the Classic Bully variety has a lighter bone structure and overall body mass than the standard American Bully. The Classic Bully variety adheres to the same standards as the standard American Bully aside from this distinction. Excel. This is a modification to the fundamental requirement based on the adult height of the object. Note that the standard American Bully is simply shorter than the XL Bully variety. The standard American Bully and XL dogs have the same physical characteristics. Males with withers over 20 to 23 inches. Females with withers over 19 to 22 inches. Purchasing an American Bully Puppy This is a modification to the fundamental requirement based on the adult height of the object. Note that the standard American Bully is simply shorter than the XL Bully variety. The standard American Bully and XL dogs have the same physical characteristics. Males with withers over 20 to 23 inches. Females with withers over 19 to 22 inches. Buying a Puppy American Bully What is the cost of an American Bully? How much does an American Bully cost is one of the most frequently asked questions. Sadly, the solution isn't that straightforward. Prices can range from $5,000 to $10,000 or more on average depending on pedigree, accomplishments, structure, quality, and bloodline, though they can also be significantly higher or lower than this range. Pet and Companion Prices You can find an American Bully Puppy for sale without breeding rights at pet prices for around $1,000 to $2,500 if you're just looking for a great companion and aren't interested in breeding. Top breeders will charge much more for premium bloodlines. Leading bloodlines and breeding stock. For those in the market looking for puppies from the best bloodlines, foundation breeding stock can cost between $15,000 and $20,000 or more. However, it's crucial to keep in mind that there are plenty of con artists out there looking to steal your hard-earned money. Always conduct your own research to ensure that you're working with a reliable breeder. Are any of the breeders' dogs famous? Any recognized studs? Have any champions or grand champions been produced by them? Last but not least, it's critical to remember that just because one breeder charges more for their dogs doesn't necessarily mean they are better than a breeder who is selling their puppies for less. Quality prices. Many new buyers make the mistake of choosing the less expensive option when they see cheaper dogs for sale, only to end up spending several thousand dollars on supplements over the course of their dog's lifetime. They will use muscle building supplements like Bully Max and Muscle Bully, only to discover that they will never achieve the build they could have achieved had they instead made a small initial investment in a high quality bloodline. Before becoming a bully breeder in the USA, 
A realistic assessment of your resources is required before deciding to commit to breeding and establishing your own bloodline. Do you first have the time and resources to devote to this project? If you start with two or three good foundation bitches, a large kennel facility is typically not required. Do you have the funds necessary for progesterone assessments, artificial inseminations, emergency C-sections, veterinary care, and the puppy's well-being? What happens if your breeding female gets sick or contracts a disease like pyometra? Do you have 3-5K set aside in case of emergency? The worst thing you can do is decide to start breeding and then find yourself unable to pay for care for your dogs in an emergency. The decision required. The dedication you have to the puppies you will be breeding may be even more crucial than the availability of space and funds. Continuous evaluation of the pups is necessary for a breeder to determine whether their breeding program is effective. Since most of us do not have unlimited space, it will be crucial to place puppies in good homes where they will receive proper care and nutrition, training, and evaluation. You should start by buying foundation stock once you've done your research, organized your resources, chosen a class or type, and decided that you're prepared to put in the time and effort necessary to responsibly care for and breed dogs. Many people who start out in the dog breeding industry typically buy one or two stud dogs along with a few female dogs. The better course of action in this situation, as covered in American Bully Breeding 101, is to begin by getting female dogs. Once your female has reached breeding age, you can either get in touch with kennels that provide stud services or get in touch with the kennel where you bought your puppy to use their studs. Stud dogs cost a lot to house, feed, and care for, and you can't always count on getting a great stud dog when they get older. Identifying a U.S. Bully Stud Finding a top American Bully Stud can be done in a variety of ways, such as by conducting a search on any of the online pedigree databases like Bullopedia, Bully Pedix, or Bully Dicks, or by attending in-person events like dog shows hosted by the ABKC, UKC, or BRC. When considering line breeding and looking for a common ancestor, these can be especially helpful. Finally, you can learn about a stud owner through word of mouth or by visiting them to see the stud in person. Breeders who Photoshop their dogs will do almost anything to keep their customers from seeing their dogs in person. Although most owners of well-known studs will make time for customers who are traveling nearby, it is understandable if they are busy. When you ask to visit the stud in person for the breeding and are met with resistance, this is usually a warning sign. Not every stud dog you see online is exactly like they are in pictures. Shows and events by ABKC. Ancestry databases. Verbal adage. Getting to the stud owner. Selecting a American bully stud. Pedigree information in detail. Selecting a stud is a significant choice that can help your kennel succeed. To make sure you are getting a high-quality line-bred dog, which means the same ancestors appear more than once in the four-generation pedigree, be sure to obtain detailed pedigree information on the dogs. In general, litters from line-bred or inbred studs are more reliable than those from scatterbred studs. Kennels with a reputation for producing high-quality puppies are aware of this and will typically line-breed. At Venom Line, every stud is line-bred, DNA-profiled, health-tested, carries every color, including all tricolor variations, and is bred to produce. Take a stud's production's word for it instead of ours, though. Qualifications of an American Bully Stud Line-bred slash inbred Productions Pedigree Consistency across various bloodlines Show dogs versus stock breed Scatterbred versus linebred slash inbred. As was already mentioned, linebred and inbred studs are more likely to pass traits to their progeny. When a linebred or inbred stud is used instead of a scatterbred one, the quality and consistency of a litter improve. Simple genetics and math make it easy to understand why a dog carrying more copies of the desired genes will have a higher likelihood of passing them on to their offspring. Linebred slash inbred dogs do not all make good stud dogs. This does not imply that all linebred and inbred dogs make excellent sires, however. There are many linebred slash inbred studs that have failed everywhere. 
There are plenty of examples if you browse through any of the bullying-related Facebook groups. If you really want to see some errors, take a look at any of the exotic bully groups. Setting Behaviors In and Line Breeding it's critical to realize that line breeding and inbreeding are methods for establishing traits. But there are drawbacks along with advantages. It is important to note the dangers of closely related breedings. If done carelessly, inbreeding is a two-edged sword that can also lead to problems. Those who are unfamiliar with dog breeding associate the word inbreeding with something negative, but since man first domesticated the dog, Careful selection, line breeding, and inbreeding have produced the best examples of nearly every recognized breed. Only skilled breeders who are fully aware of the risks involved in these types of breedings should do them. An outcross is advised right after any inbreeding to prevent the COI, coefficient of inbreeding, from rising too high. Inbreeding is used once more to establish traits. But it's crucial to remember that this means you're also doubling up on the bad, which includes undesirable recessive traits and or genetic disease, some of which you might not even be aware they existed. Brood stock versus show dogs. Another error that is frequently made is assuming that a dog is automatically a suitable stud because they are a show dog, a champion, or simply attractive. Even champion and grand champion dogs who have demonstrated their type in the show ring do not guarantee that they will make excellent stud dogs. Common errors. By choosing a reputable breeder, you can avoid common mistakes that can be expensive when you are first starting out. There are many stud owners who will gladly accept your payment, but not all of them will follow through. Worldwide student service. This is particularly valid when importing sperm from abroad. Inexperienced stud owners who don't frequently ship internationally may not always be aware of the testing requirements for imports. Each nation has its own import regulations and testing procedures that must be followed, often within a specific time frame. The shipment may be delayed in customs, and some breeding units may not even enter the country if the necessary testing isn't finished in this allotted time or if they aren't prepared, packaged, or labeled correctly. More often than you might think does it occur. Select an experienced breeder to work with. Therefore, even though some of the breeders might not have bad intentions, many won't be able to deliver the shipments to the customer's country or perform the services for which they were compensated. Some are blatant scams. Select a reputable breeder with experience to avoid all of these problems. A person who can recommend clients who have successfully imported sperm into your country. To protect yourself in the event that a tank disappears or is delayed by customs, make sure your shipment is insured. Last but not least, a complete description of the transaction, the payment amount, and the precise obligations of the stud owner under the contract.